Seriously, Jerry. She's been up since four o'clock, tapping on the bed, waiting to go for a walk. Four o'clock. Oi. You are a naughty girl. Four o'clock you've been up, tapping on my bed, waiting to go for a walk. What's the matter, Jerry? You got ants in your pants. You gotta put this on. Why you always do this? We gotta put this on, Jerry. Hey, come on, Jerry. What's the matter? Come on. Hey, you see the gato? Jerry, look. Jerry, you're gonna walk into the cat. You're gonna walk into the into the putty cat. <laughs> Jerry, you're playing. <laughs> no, oh, lucky you get all excited. <laughs> lucky, you're so beautiful. Look, <laughs> Jerry. <laughs> oh, no, Jerry, look, Buster. <laughs> Jerry, this way is Buster. <laughs> Jerry! Look, Buster Jerry! Look at her tail go! <laughs> oh, Alright. Okay, that's the walk out of the way. Let's get on with the show. G'day, how's it going? And um, <clears throat> so today, yeah, so this week uh, I went to the zoo and I took some really good shots, I thought. Really sharp. Uh, with the 100 to 400 lens, I found um, it was overcast, so there was like a natural softbox light. And I just found that the lighting was really nice. So the the shutter speed was quite low, um, not as low as I thought it would be because it's still out in the daylight. Uh, but the beauty there, it, the animals aren't really moving that much, so it's not like birds in flight where you got to keep your up your shutter speed so high that it's impossible to freeze anything um, because your ISO would just go through the roof you know if I had to go to 1000 speed the ISO would have just gone through the roof and that would have looked shit so yeah it's you, you got to take you got to pick and choose your days I guess uh, when you're doing wildlife if it's fast motion Mind you, the, the zoo is very captive audience, so you can't, you can't go wrong at a zoo. Uh, it's kind of cheating. You know, it's not really wildlife photography, but who cares? I'm ne you know, it's like I said, I'm, I'm never gonna, I'm never gonna see a lion, Jerry, or a tiger. It's a, one of those zoos where it's, it's in open field. They're not in cages or anything. Uh, so you do really need a good zoom. I mean, you can get away with a 150 uh, and just crop in a little bit. But like I said, I called the, um, that episode up close because <laughs> I really was bloody up close uh, with this uh, behemoth uh, bazooka. That's a good, good uh, lens all rounder because you can zoom back and fill the front, uh, get the whole animal in place. You can then zoom in and get a really good uh, close-up. You can see the, the micro hairs in, <laughs> like that camel, the camel one's unreal. Uh, part two is coming this week. Uh, I try to cut down the videos down to 10 minutes because, I don't know, people's attention spans aren't that long <laughs> uh, on YouTube. So I thought I'd condense it. I mean, it took me one day of editing. I used, uh, I'm still using Luminar 4, uh, I was 
just about to hit the the buy button on Luminar AI or Neo, and it's got all this new Fandangle automation and shit that goes in it. But I'm just thinking Luminar Four does the exact same thing. It's just that you've got to fiddle around a bit more. There's not as much AI. I mean, it's got a lot of AI because it was marketed as AI originally, and now they've come up with this Neo. And like Jim Nix, he, he says it's good, it's worth the upgrade. A lot of people are saying it's worth the upgrade. Uh, you get all these extra things like, uh, Jerry, what do you get all these extra things? Are there telegraph lines? Yeah. The only thing, there's not many presets, so... There was one I mentioned in there, uh, Joel Grimes. I didn't realise he's like a famous YouTube photographer or whatever. And he had this one called Indian Summer and it's really nice. I mentioned it in the video. There's a preset. So, and then once you, see the, the way of presets um, or LUTs, I don't know what they're called. In there they call them looks, but then they changed it to presets. And then anyway, they... They give you a little baseline and you go, oh yeah, I'll, I'll like that and then I can tweak that later. You can add your own look to it. <laughs> hey Jerry, you can add your own look. Huh? Did you go for a big walk this morning? Yes. Like in uh, the snake one, that green snake, it was perfect. Because that's the other thing with this... Uh, um, Mahu, Mah Mahogam, uh, Maj Maj Majiga Bazooka, it's a good macro type, or as I say, R B C. Jerry, what's the matter? Uh, really bloody close lens. You stay there, Jerry. Where you want to go? Huh? What's the matter? You want to go Nana? So, yeah, and that snake, all I had to do was just sharpen the eye up a little bit in post, but the rest of it was just like super sharp. Mind you, it's a captive, you know, audience there. So, uh, mind you, it was a little bit soft because it's going through glass. Now, I didn't get any reflection or anything, uh, but it was going through glass, so there was a slight little diffraction or some shit, you know. Harry, what's the matter? You have a little nana? Yes, Jerry. And I've been watching a lot of uh, Dwayne, uh, what's his last name? Anyway, I've been watching a lot of him, Patton, Dwayne Peyton, Dwayne, Dwayne Patton, Peyton, he's a really, he's one of the best, I tell you, I, I cannot believe how good his bird photography is. So, I mean, I was so impressed, I went and even bought, uh, like, photos of him. So, he's got his own little thing that he does. Uh, he's been doing photography for a while. And then he started a YouTube about two years ago. I'm telling you, I mean, the guy's a legend. Uh, he's just really good. I mean, he uses Canon, so, you know, that's not his fault. So, <laughs> but no, yeah, the Canon. I mean, I, I seriously, you get so tempted with the, the whole, you know, when you watch other photographers, you think, oh, what are they using, you know? But the, the Canon is, um, I mean, he was using the D7, uh, then he was using the D5 Mark III. So these are all DSLR cameras, and the lenses are massive. So now he's finally flipped over to the R5, I think, uh, and using mirrorless. But all these, all the most of these shots are, are all from um, what do you call it? The uh, uh, DSLRs. You know, obviously high end full frame. Uh, you know, the quality is there. Obviously, you've got to sacrifice the big bulkiness and that. 
Um, that's why I think, you know, when technology came along and mirrorless, he's obviously moved up to the R5. But he, I was thinking even, uh, maybe even get a, a 5D Mark III uh, Canon. Uh, the shutter, like, that's a bit slow. But, so what? If there's one thing I hate, <laughs> it's culling through photos, you know. I, I'm kind of thinking to myself, I like that it's shit all as slow <laughs> i don't want that many shots i mean if i was a professional maybe you know because it was a crucial to get the shot uh all right that's fair enough you know give me the 100 frames per second but jesus how many how many photos do you have to go through just to get the one that you want you know if the way i look at it is i'm not a professional so if i miss the shot big deal but then saying that, I mean, Rob Trek was saying, God, it's like, it's so easy now with the OM-1. I'm, I'm, like I flipped over now, I'm talking about the OM-1, because I've been watching, I always watch Rob Trek. Um, and he's saying, man, this is just too easy. <laughs> it's just, it feels like it's cheating, you know, which is good, I guess, because, yeah, the easier, the better. You know, he's saying, he's really, it's really giving him a new lease on in on on his photography journey, the OM1 with its new AI uh, bird detection thingamajigs that it does. Joe, you do a little twirl twirl, uh, and you know that's making me want to buy it too. You know because if you're going to go out and take you know birds in flight or just anything in general where focus is the focus, you know. Sure, you've got, you know, get your app settings right and your light and all that. But seriously, if you miss focus, no one gives two shits if you're um, uh, over it, if you've got perfect exposure. <laughs> you can get all the perfect exposure and lighting and everything. You miss focus by one little second, you know, one little smidge, and it's like, next. <laughs> and especially with moving objects. So, yeah. And, but I think what... Now going back to what Dwayne does, he sets the birds up. You know what I mean? He uh, he doesn't. He's not known. He even says it in one of his videos. He's not known for his birds in flight. Uh, so he likes to set things up. There's another guy, uh, really famous, um, a really popular. Another guy. I can't remember his name. Uh, he was and Dwayne was a recent guest on his show. I think he's an Aussie, um, maybe Kiwi, I don't know. I think he must be Aussie because he, they do the show together once. And and he, he does the same thing. Um, you set it up because you've got to pick that background. Because you see here, like that, you see the background? Absolutely creamy, beautiful, no distractions. Uh, and that's set up, you know, not set up as in fake, like a green screen, whatever, but he's moved his camera just a, an inch here to the perfect, no distraction in the background. Obviously, you need to have that separation. So, you know, if you're going to shoot at f8 or f5.6 in micro for losers terms, you know, to get that sweet spot on your camera, uh, but I think with Canon, it's around f8 full frame. Uh, you, because the reason you want to get the bird completely in, in focus, because of depth of field, you need that, the, the background needs to be further back. It can't be too close, because you need that separation. And, that, and that's setting it up, setting up the shot. You know, you, you get a tweak and you put it like, you're still out in the wild, obviously. But you get a you break a twig off that looks nice, and you put it there. Maybe put some worms um, that you you know, or some bugs or some shit, and wait for the birds to come to you. So you don't go chasing the birds; the birds come to you. <laughs> this week's gear and acquisition syndrome segment: space, the final frontier. The Olympus sixty millimeter macaro macaroni it's 
So I can't believe how thin and small it is. It's bizarre. It looks weird. <laughs> I've been lugging this around for the last, you know, month. Uh, and even the 150, uh, it's just weird. It's so small and light and, uh, and on this body too. And it's a, you know, the macro lens. Uh, that's my gear acquisition for this week. Uh, I, I bought a few other things, but this is the biggest ticket item I bought. Uh, I've always wanted to get into macro and I've been using extension tubes and these extension tubes uh, they're good because they go between the lens and the thing uh, but I thought I had a good price though I was about 430 I thought I might as well get professional with it <laughs> well not professional but you know what I mean uh, why fight us around with these all the time just get the get the real deal and it, I like it because it's got this little thing here when you go to that one it automatically I'll show you you see that little thingamajig there that tells you the focus so when you go to if I click that to one to one it goes straight to the closest focus you can get uh, automatically automatically so who's that Jerry uh, because I found you know in focus it doesn't when you turn the manual focus um, there's no stop and there's no start and end it just keeps on turning and you don't know if you're right at the end of the limit of so what you do then when you click that to go to the one-to-one -one, then you can just move back and forward a bit 60 millimeters uh, at what the hell is it? I don't even know. At 2.8, uh, it's a good portrait lens apparently. The Olympus 60 millimeter macro calamari digital Zuiko lens. So <laughs> gear acquisition for the week. Uh, oh yeah, I've got to check in my weight. One hundred five. Whoa, that's three kilograms. Unreal. So, <laughs> I think uh, Jerry, where are you? I lost three kilograms, Jerry, in one week. Mm, that's a little bit excessive, actually. Hey, Jerry. Yeah, that's a little bit excessive. I think the first week you always tend to lose a little bit more, and then it slows them down and pat, 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 plateaus off. Uh, so, hey Jerry, hey, Jerry, we lost, we lost three kilograms, Jerry. Yes, you too. How much did you lose? Jerry's ten kilograms, <laughs> hundred and five. So, what's the matter, Jerry? You want to go for a walk? You already went for a walk. You have a big stretch. Uh, it's got to keep it up now. <laughs> Because you get so bloody hungry. Uh, Jerry, that's the video for today. Tippy Tail Tuesday is over. I forgot to take a tippy tail. Jerry, it's time for the tippy tail photo of the week. Oi, why you cheeky bum? What's the matter? Hmm? You look good, nice in that golden light, Jerry. I'll do a tippy tail photo of the week. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching uh, Tippy Tail Tuesday for this week. Uh, more tippy tail adventures, more tippy tail photography news, gadgets, gear acquisitions. <laughs> I don't know what the hell I'm doing. Uh, uh, next week. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you later.